This episode of the Old Dogs REI Network is brought to you by Mino Studio. In a world where jobs are how most people make money, one man, one desire, one challenge dares to break the mold. Welcome to the Old Dogs REI Network, where we don't work for money. Money works for us. Coming soon, viewer discretion advised. Welcome to the Old Dogs REI Network, where cash flow is king. Real estate investing, the means, so you can enjoy your retirement dreams. This is the show where we cut right to the chase. No sales pitch, no long monologues, just simple how-to real estate investing advice, so you can earn the passive income you need to enjoy your retirement today. And now, your host and chief old dog, Bill Manassero. Welcome to the Old Dogs REI Network. I'm your host, Bill Manassero, and this is a show where 50 plusers and anyone else who wants to join us get solid, no sales pitch real estate investing advice to help generate real cash flow. This podcast airs twice weekly on Mondays and Fridays, and if you aren't already a subscriber, go to iTunes, type in Old Dog, spelled D A W G, find our podcast, and subscribe. Well, today we've got a, a great show for you today. This is going to be a kick. On our website, we have a list of what we've determined are the top 20 real estate investing books. And in that uh, list, there's a book called The Unofficial Guide to Real Estate Investing. And uh, we have the author of that book here with us today, uh, Martin Stone, or he likes to be called Marty. Uh, I'll be calling him Marty. He's the founder and one of the owners of Buckingham Investments. He's a Southern California guy like myself, not doesn't live too far away from where we are. He has a very successful real estate investing business. He was a broker and investor for over 40 years. Marty was very energetic in his youth. So besides brokering uh, investments, he established a management, development, syndication, and finance divisions within the company. At what one point, he had four brokerage operations managing over a thousand units, and in the 1980s, developed over 50 apartment buildings, commercial buildings, and single family homes. A graduate of USC with a degree in finance, he has also co authored two highly successful books. Uh, I mentioned The Unofficial Guide to Real Estate Investing. He also authored Secure Your Financial Future. He has a new book, which is out uh, hopefully in the middle of 2018 through Dover publications called How Real Estate Took Me from Welfare to Wealth. Marty and his wife, Lori, have three sons, Aaron, Chris, and Adam, and reside in Southern California. So, Marty, welcome to the Old Dogs REI Network. Hey, thanks, Bill. Uh, you, I, I'm uh, blushing after that introduction. So, <laughs> I, I'm going. Gee, did I do all that stuff? <laughs> well, you certainly have. A, Thanks for a, reminding uh, me. <laughs> a long list of accomplishments. Uh, it, it sounds like you've had a, a, an awesome career here. It's been fun. Yeah, I've enjoyed it. And I think one thing that that's really pretty amazing too. Okay, and I'm I'm I live in. California too, but I don't invest in California. I've only invested in other states. And uh -huh. you have done all of your investing here in California and and most of it, you know, not far from where uh, your office is in El Segundo. I mean, this, uh, this is going to be really fascinating for me to hear um, how you make it work here <laughs> because I got real discouraged when I started looking. So, so hopefully, listen, why don't you just give us your story, your background, uh, and, you know, how, how you kind of eventually landed in this uh, crazy real estate investing world? Well, what, what happened is, is I grew up in uh, Minnesota. Uh, you, you can gather from the title of my book about going from welfare to wealth. We were really poor, and uh, I grew up in a, a single mom. My dad's health was bad, and he 
couldn't help, and my mom really wasn't educated, so we were on welfare. And as I got older, I uh, realized I was going to have to do something if I didn't want to uh, continue with that lifestyle. And in Minnesota, the uh, the possibilities of getting ahead were really limited. And, and it was in when I was looking and going to college, it was expensive there. And I I happened to get a wild hair uh, in my senior year with a couple friends to go out to California for a month to uh, uh, learn how to surf and get a suntan. And <laughs> I, I had relatives out here and uh, I found out you could go to, not only was the weather great, but you could go to college for just a couple bucks starting in junior college. And it was going to be really expensive in Minnesota. So when I went back to start college, I, I decided to, uh, I told my mom, I'm going to go back. You know, I got, we got all relatives out there and I can go to college cheap. And she goes, eh, I've never liked it here either. So the whole family moved out here and I started uh, the El Camino college. And my, the first friend I made was, I had to get a job to help uh, out, even though we were still collecting welfare from Minnesota. My mom couldn't get much of a job. I think she was working in a sewing factory in downtown L.A. I got a job and met this uh, 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 a friend. My first friend's name was Bob, and and we really hit it off, and he was going to El Camino, too. And his father was a huge engineer, but he, he was – all he ever talked about was getting out of uh, – out of that high stress job as soon as he could, and he was going to do it with his real estate investments that he had bought through Jack Buckingham, who started Buckingham Investments. And we drove the properties, and he told the stories and all that. So as we were going through college, Bob and I, we we said, yeah, well, we're, we're going to get we're going to get through college. We're going to get good jobs. We're going to make money, invest like your dad, so we can retire young. And as luck would have it, when I graduated from SC and Bob too, the economy was so bad in the early 70s, we couldn't get jobs. I mean, uh, and I thought, God, I got a, I got this great degree from this fantastic business school, and I couldn't get a job. Bob couldn't get a job. So his dad talked Jack into giving us a job here selling real estate. And, uh, you know, when I couldn't get a job and and – when I, I <clears throat> the only money I was making then was uh, uh, collecting unemployment because I because I actually make more collecting unemployment than the kind of menial jobs I could get. My unemployment was running out, so I thought, why don't I just why don't I just do that? Why don't I work? Why don't I work in the industry where I'm, I'm going to make enough money to retire early, like Bob's dad? So that's how I got here, and uh, the rest is history, I guess they say. That's that's fascinating. I mean, just just to have that uh, that mentor there to be able to oh, yeah. just you know teach you the ropes. I mean, that's that's pretty amazing stuff. Well, and Jack Buckingham had retired very young from aerospace. He was a he had a degree in physics, and he worked at McDonnell Douglas, writing programs to launch and track missiles and satellites. So he was really into the data <clears throat> mining and and and. He learned real estate investing from his grandfather, who was a horse trader and a real estate speculator in Yakima, Washington. And uh, so he came <laughs> down here, and he, he he did the same thing as his grandfather did, except he wasn't buying bottom land in Yakima. He was – they were like buying back then. They were buying uh, uh, lots in Venice off the canals, and so uh, he, he retired, and uh, he just – Plunked, plunked himself down in El Segundo, uh, and he had gotten a license, you know, to to be able to uh, uh, better have access to properties. And uh, guys started coming to him, saying, "Jack, you got to help us do what you did, because we're this is we're we're getting ulcers and we're going to die young." And so he started just started helping those people invest, and uh, Jack being the kind of uh, intellectual data guy everything he did was based on uh, mining data and historical trends and and education and and uh, so he uh, that's what he did he just mined the data and he uh, to 
see trends and things like that. And, and uh, he educated himself as he was investing when he was still working on how real estate investing worked how to understand it and he he educated the, the people that came to see him with training courses and and uh he was his, he was big on planning uh you know you you educate yourself on what real estate investing is all about you educate yourself on the market then you put a, a plan together and then you just work your plan around finding investments that fit your plan and that's that's how Buckingham started. And that's how we still work. Oh, it's education, planning, and investing later. So, uh, and it's worked. It's worked. And uh, so that's what I what I learned. And uh, we, you know, we lost Jack uh, earlier this year at eighty six. But uh, hmm. he has he's he's been out of the business for for quite a few years. I'm in the El, El Segundo office, and he he. I built a facility here where we are today, and and he had a, a his uh, place was next door. So he still came down two or three times a day to make sure I had my nose to the grindstone. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's only he handed everything over for you to run, I guess, at a certain point. Yeah, yeah. Well, when I came to work for him, there was just a few people here because he was just he he he, he was just kind of. Uh, doing whatever. And, uh, I was young and energetic, you know, I got this degree and I've got all this knowledge in my head, which was really wasn't applicable, but I had enough energy. And so he took me under his wing and then added a couple people and then a few more people. And then I got more energetic. And that's when we got into all the other stuff that you mentioned in the beginning, uh, added first, I think first we added property management because all of our, most of our clients are are not in a position where they can manage their own stuff. So we we and we were referring them out, and then we decided to start a management company. And then uh, as our offices grew, we had financing always became a big issue. So we started a finance company that to, where we could do all the financing for our clients, which worked out well. And at about that same time, I always liked building stuff. I I love work. What growing up in Minnesota, I love woodworking. So I, mm -hmm. I took woodworking classes, building, and so I decided, well, why don't we start building some stuff? So I got my contractor's license, and that was really a lot. That was enjoyable to do that. And we we didn't we didn't general contract for other people. We just built for either uh, our clients or groups we put together, and uh, that was real. Uh, it was real enjoyable. You mentioned that Jack was um, uh, in the early stages, actually buying lots in in Venice, and and so yeah, he was he, buying stuff in Venice and off, yeah, in the in the canals back in the old days when they were smelly and all that before they and they you know buy them and fix them up and hold them for a while and sell them and buy more. So he he was he was building from the ground up on those, uh, uh, doing development back then. Huh? Well, I, I think he did some of those, but mostly he was buying things that, you know, were run down and just, just like people do today that are real energetic. You know, when you're young right. and energetic, you can get into buying things and fixing them up and then that's what they were doing and, and managing them. And he was, he was, he was really good at managing and a lot of people aren't, you know, they get, they get lax and the, the buildings suffer and the. And their rents don't stay where they should, and all that. So that that was uh, one of his big fortes. Since when you do the kind of things he did in industry, you have to be on top of things. You have to track data. You have to manage things. You have to do plans, and that's that's what we've always done as a company, and we've always taught our clients about that. Oh, that's great. And that educational component has been something you've kept from the from the get go, right? I mean, you guys still do that oh, today. Yeah. Which is really interesting. Could you explain that to our audience, just exactly what you do? You know, when you when you get uh, new clients in. Well, it started back way, like I said, when Jack got started. He, you know, real estate can be kind of mysterious. So, and he learned by, you know, he learned by doing. And so, when people started coming to him, he wanted them to understand what he understood. So he started off originally with just handwritten flip charts in his office. He'd sit people down, he'd explain cash flow and equity growth from 
loan payoff and equity growth from appreciation and equity growth from ca- just all the tax benefits and you explain about depreciation and tax deferred exchanges and installment sales and we just it just grew from there and uh, as, as we got more agents and he wrote he wrote the basic real estate investment guide i've got copies of that are 40 years old through go, going through variations of and and uh, then the real estate investment planning guide and real estate tax factors guide and and we put a property management seminar together for people who want to manage themselves and we just obviously we've modernized that over the years and and uh the way my first book came out is uh, one of the guys that was working with me was helping his brother write another book. And I offhandedly suggested, uh, uh, gee, why don't you ask them if they want a real estate book? And of course, <laughs> I don't know. Then, <laughs> be careful what you ask for. Goes, oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Be careful what you ask for. They said, yeah, give us a proposal. <laughs> so what we did is we took the our 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 basic guys like 30 pages and and we put them I put them together and put more meat into them and that's that's how the unofficial guide came out and then after writing that I realized we had some some important stuff about real estate was missed so I <clears throat> we did that secure your financial future book and then and then um I uh uh we did a second edition of the unofficial guide because it did really well. And then, uh, uh, as far as the company goes, we 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 still do training seminars and a lot of individual meetings with clients to, to make sure they understand. The key thing is make sure you understand what real estate investing is all about, and then we make sure they understand what the marketplace looks like by t- just getting in the car and driving around and showing them just different areas and showing them, you know, one of the f- fun things we do is let's say someone's got enough money to buy a, two units. We'll, we'll, we'll go like Long Beach, for example, it's a huge city and there's a lot of different markets there. So we'll, we'll show them two units in all the different marketplaces that, that we sell in, in Long Beach. So they can get an idea that, gee, a two unit, you know, a little, a little bit out of downtown might cost you 250000 And if you go down to Belmont Shore, that might cost you a, a million fifty, you know, or a million two fifty. Right. So that they see the differences. And then once they're done with that, what we really, what we really like people to do is to put an investment <clears throat> plan together of what they're trying to accomplish by investing in real estate. You know, what kind of Long-term personal goals are they trying to accomplish using real estate? You know, a lot of people just say, "Well, I just want to make a lot of money." Well, that's that's not the kind of goal that most people can wrap their arms around, you know, because they're that's a tough one. Because uh, making a lot of money, well, how much is a lot of money? And if you quantify it, it's it, 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 and most people start with, well, what I'd really like to do is I'd really like to replace my salary from my job so I don't have to work anymore. And that's a great start. And then you add the other things to it. And then you you sit down and look at the the kind of assets that you have to work with today. And then we put a plan together to figure out how quickly can we get it <clears throat> to that point where you can walk in one day and say, you know, I'm uh, I'm done. <laughs> and most <laughs> And uh, and uh, a lot most people don't necessarily quit when they're at that point, but boy, they the pressure is off, and they can they can look at maybe doing it, you know, a lot a lot sooner than you know the the, the Kool Aid that most people drink is is yeah you put your nose to the grindstone you get a good education and you work till you're 65 or 70 and and then you can get a social security check and a pension, and then you can enjoy the good life. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, how many people never make it to 65 or 70? Uh, yeah, right. Or who had and, the energy and, to enjoy it at that yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I remember all the stuff I could do when I was in my 30s and 40s, and I'm I'm much older than that now. And I, I sit on the sidelines and watch my grandkids do that stuff now, and I go, boy, I'm just getting tired watching them. <laughs> yeah, I can relate so, to that. 
Yeah, yeah. so we it's it's like the more personal you can make a plan, uh, the 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 easier it is to be dedicated to it, so that you really put time and effort into achieving it, as opposed to. Here's the problem most people have. <clears throat> if you've got enough money and credit that you can invest in real estate, you probably have a decent job, and you probably spend a pretty good amount of time at your job planning to make a lot of money for the company you work for so the guys that own the company are flying in private jets all over the world, skiing in Switzerland and vacationing in private islands in the Caribbean, and you're busting your butt at work and planning – how to make their company worth more money so they can do that. And if you, if you, if you spend a little time doing that for yourself, it's amazing how quickly people can get to the point where they can. And it's, it, 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 it comes down to, there's a, there's a saying people used to always ask, ask Jack about being rich. And Jack always said, a rich man is one who knows when he's got enough. And see, no, <clears throat> most people never take the time to figure out what enough means for them because they're caught in a treadmill, you know, their treadmill, get up, go to work, save, blah, 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 do this, do that. Instead of figuring out <clears throat> what, what, what would enough look like for me? And uh, once they do that, uh, you know, that's an eye opening exercise. And we've got workbooks to help people do that. And we've got online uh, <clears throat> planning things to help do that. And, and primarily, it primarily starts with sitting down and figuring out what what is it in life. I mean, I, I like the, uh, uh, you know, I like the saying that, you're, you know, your work isn't your life. And one of the most eye-opening <clears throat> questions that was ever asked to me at a, it was actually at a, uh, a a marriage seminar I went to with my wife, and it was where they split the guys up, and the moderator said, so I'm going to ask a question, and I'm not looking for a show of hands, but here's the question. If 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 you were laying on your deathbed today, would you be wishing you had spent more time at the office? That really gets you thinking about, because about, uh, you never know when that's going to happen. <clears throat> and if you, if you think it through, it's like, no, I really – wish I didn't have to spend as much time at the office. And then you go from there. It's like, well, what would I really, what would I really like to do if I hit the lottery? And when you get rid of all the stupid stuff and you get down to the stuff that would really bring long-term joy to you, and then you quantify that. Most people that have a good job and make, make a, a decent salary and got credit, they can, they can get there a lot quicker than 65 or 70. It's awesome. Well, well, Marty, in the in the time that you've you know done the you have forty years in this uh, mm -hmm. uh, industry, and uh, are there any things that you would look back on and and, and and you would say, well, you know, I not not necessarily regrets or mistakes, but things that you would have done differently um, that uh, you know that you look back and go, gosh, if I would have done it over, if I could have done it over, I would have done this. Uh, probably the only thing I, I, I probably would have done is I would have done that exercise that I just got through spouting off that people should do. I would have done it sooner. Mm -hmm. And I, and I got, and I got to that point, uh, and part of that story is in that book that's coming out about some of the stuff I had to go through in life. But, uh, if I would have done that, I, I, you know, those years, those go go years of doing all those things that I'm talking about, building a company and 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 finance and syndication and construction and all that. <clears throat> I could have if I would have if I would have had my plan down a little better, it's not that I wasn't accumulating net worth during those periods, but if I would have if I would have been looking at at uh what what would I really like to be doing if if uh, there was another book I was going to write and I was build I was going to build it around if you hit the lottery in as a way of getting people to think about okay if I did hit the lottery what would my life look like if I didn't it never had to worry about money and you get rid of again you get rid of all the dumb stuff like I'd buy a jet and blah 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 <clears throat> and uh, I, I would have. Uh, I would have got 
gotten uh, to a real ha- happy spot probably a lot quicker because you never know what life's going to throw you. Mm-hmm. We uh, we uh, when I wrote my unofficial guidebook, uh, getting the contract to write that book saved my sanity because right after I got the contract to write the book, we found out my wife had breast cancer. Mm. And I was fortunate financially to be able to take time off of work so I could be with her through the whole, her surgeries and <clears throat> all that, and chemotherapy and stay home and take care of her. But, but if I had, you know, she was so much recuperation and all that. And I had, I had, uh, three young kids and uh, writing, writing the book kept kept me sane when she was not, you know, feeling good and just sleeping and all that stuff. And, and uh, <clears throat> so those kind of things happen in life. And uh, I'm uh, thankful that I had enough real estate in investments that I was able to I, I stayed in the, the hospital with her. I, I went to every chemotherapy treatment with her. I went to every doctor's appointment with her. I still do that, but but so if I had, to, you know, there's you just never know what life's going to throw you. So the quicker you can get to that point where you can uh, stay on top of things and do the things in life that really bring you joy, the the better I think the better off your life can be. Uh, sure. Well, I, I was kind of ask you to sort of what what was your biggest mistake, your biggest success? I mean, do do you have anything that comes to mind in, in those two areas? Well, uh, biggest success, boy, I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 if I, if I had to say that the biz, biggest success I've ever had was the fact that that <clears throat> that I didn't get a job out of college. <laughs> that's good. Because <laughs> the, yeah, that's I wouldn't. Good point. But I, I, in my last year of college, I was working for one of my relatives uh, at a large manufacturing company in Pasadena in his finance department, and I, I just had, I didn't have, I had, didn't have great jobs there, but I, it was all the stuff associated with stuff I was studying in college and I got to do different projects with the employees, you know, for, for marketing classes and for psychology classes. But <clears throat> what happened is his account, his business, his company ended up going under and, uh, I, I was, I was pushed into the position of handling all the duties of the CPA and the finance VP of that company. And I really, God, I, I didn't like it. This, hmm. this getting to work at seven and going home at seven and all the stress and the books and the records and all that. I thought, gosh, you know, I spent four years of my life getting a degree and <clears throat> I'm really not happy with this. Mm-hmm. And I, I thought, boy, if I have to do this the rest of my life. And I looked at the guys that were doing the jobs there that I would be doing. And I, I got, you know, I got advanced, you know, 20 years and a few months to jobs that you know, I might have had to work in industry, and so that the, the that was the best thing that ever happened to me that I didn't I, that I didn't get a job yeah. that, I, that I got out, got into the industry that I'm in, and it's we've had struggles, but uh, but uh, I don't know anybody that doesn't have them. Yeah, oh sure. So, I'm not sure that answered you. No, that actually that. That does a great answer. That's a great answer. Um, you know, you know that uh, our our audience is really focused on those that are fifty years of age and older. Yeah. Um, they're either oh, yeah. approaching retirement or already in retirement, and uh, okay. and a lot of them, you know, listen to the show and uh, and probably others and and read books to to find out if real estate investing can help them in their particular situation. Now, you have may have some right. that. That maybe lost their pensions, you know, during the 2008, oh, yeah. 2009, or, or maybe they they just they, they're not getting enough to really do more than survive, and uh, so they're looking yeah. at real estate investing. But we're you know the thing that's different is that we're starting out later in life, and so yeah, they're they're really it. yeah they're, they're it's not like a young guy in his twenties that you know has all the time in the world to build up a, right. a portfolio. Yeah. What kind of advice would you have for for those folks that uh, 
that you know that in terms of how would they get started and and uh, or about getting started uh, that that would be helpful. Well, the the first thing that I would suggest, and I and uh, and I give uh, to, to to people just getting started out, like like what I would have gotten started out if I had gotten a regular job. The 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 first advice I give young people just getting started is <clears throat> once you get once you get a little money and credit together, you should buy a piece of property to get started with. And for gosh sakes, don't buy a house or a condominium. Go buy go buy two, three, four units, and uh, and get started investing that way. Because most people are <clears throat> they either live at home or they rent an apartment, and and you know they first thing a lot of people do when they get started is they oh they want to get a BMW and a and a real nice house or a condo somewhere and saddle themselves with debt. I say you don't need a house and all that right away. Get buy 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 a decent investment property and live in it. And if, and, and until you really need to put your roots down, and if you, if 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 you get time, buy two or three or four. And uh, for most people, if they if they did that when they first got out of college, they they could retire very young and live a real good life. For people <clears throat> a little bit older, I'd say if you if you don't already own something, do the same thing that I advise young people do: go out and and buy two, three, four units to live in. And uh, what will happen is if you live in them and you manage them and you, and you, and you raise rents at some point in the not too distant future, even if you buy with an FHA loan where you only put three and a half percent down at some point, you'll be living there free and your tenants will be making all the mortgage payments. You got a free place to live. And if you already have a house, uh, I advise people, to go out and and buy a piece of investment property that has a, a unit in there that you could see yourself living in when you really wanted to, to cut loose of your work and <clears throat> and retire and uh, you wouldn't necessarily have to move into it right away if you've got a home and and but but buy that property and tuck it away and manage it properly and then and then <clears throat> when you're when you're a couple years uh, from r retirement, you should uh, move out of your house and move into your investment property and rent your house out. And there's no specific tax law about that, but normally uh, most accountants will say if you if you rent it out for a couple years, you're pretty safe. Once you've converted your home to a to a uh, uh, investment, you can do a tax deferred exchange and and trade that. You probably have a pretty big house, depending on what part of the country you're in. You might have a pretty good equity, and you can trade that for a piece of another piece of investment property. And now you're living one that you own that you bought prior, and you're probably living there pretty reasonably. And if you trade your house for another piece of investment property, you probably are going to have a pretty nice cash flow from there, and that's going to be a real uh, help for someone. Uh, who's either retiring where they have a pension and social security or maybe just a pension or maybe they're just going to – they might have enough on those, just those to be able to lead a comfortable life until the other things kick in. But that would be my first advice to people a little bit later on. That's a great uh... – yeah, great strategy. It's really interesting. I haven't heard of that before, where someone would take their home and and use uh, and and they'd move into the the rental that they purchased and make their yeah. home a a rental property, right? And and uh, yeah. so that you can get the ten thirty one exchange. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, that's yeah. really a great little strategy. Wow, that's well, awesome. See, the thing is, you you. Uh, with a single family, and I don't know what. The, see, I don't know what's coming down from Washington now, but. It used to be that you could, if you were married, you could you could get five hundred thousand worth of capital gain tax free, or two fifty if you were single. But that's that's been under threat for years, and uh, so if you lost that, <clears throat> you're either stuck living in your house, or you have to sell it. And you got to pay the capital gain tax, and there's no reason to do that. We've been using that strategy with our clients since I first came to work for Jack. And uh, as a matter of fact, my 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 friend Bob's dad, who I told you about to begin with, that's exactly what he did <clears throat> when he was ready to cash it all in. He 
He moved into an apartment building he had and rented his house out. And he converted his his uh, when he con- then he converted his house to uh, a rental, and then he tax deferred exchanged that. And he pulled a bunch of money out of uh, a couple of his buildings, and he went up to Santa Cruz Mountains, and he bought a big acreage of land there with a couple of houses on it. And he retired up there, and he built a, a Chardonnay grape vineyard and <laughs> ended his grapes. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's exactly what his plan. That was exactly what his plan was, and it came to fruition. And and uh, a, a backstory is he had this big. A uh, coastal redwood tree in his right in the middle of his property, and the darn thing got bugs in it and died. And you had to get a permit to cut it down. And he cut the darn thing down, and he had a had a mill come in, and they milled all the wood, and he built another house on his property with the wood he took out of his own tree. No, <laughs> you're yeah. Not yeah. kidding me. <laughs> no, no, it, and it was a beautiful house too, with an incredible ocean view. Wow. And he looked out over his Chardonnay vineyard, and that, that's what he did. And he retired young. Now, how long did it take him to to do that from start to finish? Uh, you mean retire? I, I mean, I mean retired? the plan, uh, the plan, the actual plan where we first started, uh, where we moved out of his home and uh, until well, he moved. Well, that was just in. a couple of years because he had already had he already had a bunch of property, so he mm-hmm. he just waited two years and then he he pulled that all together and left. Wow, fascinating! We, <clears throat> that was not that long after we got out of college. That. That is really neat. Yeah, one yeah. thing that, that's really unique uh, that I, I just kind of blew me away when I talked to you uh, uh, separate from this interview um, about uh, Buckingham and uh, the fact that your clients, when they come in, um, that they are in, they're in training and that you actually right. uh, put them through an educational process. And it's not you're not charging any. It's not like a con- heavy consulting, you know, deal. It's it's just part of your service to the people that right. um, that become your clients I, I'd, yeah. I'd never heard yeah. of that before and uh, it's 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 really amazing um, uh, I think it's a, a really amazing service that that you provide and w- one thing I was kind of curious about too what what are, what are some of the first the, the fundamental things you know if you were to say I don't know three to five things that you really need to know before you can actually start investing um, what would you say those those key things are? That you should learn or be educated in. Well, the 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 uh, the basics of how uh, investment property uh, operate, and that's where again the the basic guide that Jack wrote uh, fifty years ago uh, that all that fits in a, a thirty page book or less. <laughs> it just it just talks about how do you calculate cash flow. You know, how do you how do you analyze expenses and you know what's reasonable and and how do you uh, when you when you make a loan payment <clears throat> uh, a part of its principal and part of its interest well when you pay off your principal on your home you're paying off the loan and you don't get any side benefit from that when you pay off principal on an investment property you're paying off the principal with the tenant income so so that's a return to you because if you owned a property for 30 years and you paid the loan off, it it didn't take one penny out of your own pocket. It was paid off with the tenant income. So that's a return to you. And then how do you how do you calculate depreciation, and how does that affect you? What are tax deferred exchanges all about and installment sales? And then and then uh, uh, one of the things that that is uh, and uh, that that throws people off is uh, is when you talk about appreciation and value, people get the idea that that's not something you can count on, and it and that's the uh, that's uh, that's a myth. Yes, you can really count on appreciation because appreciation. Some some economists years ago probably wanting to make a name for himself decided to 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 call what happens to real estate appreciation instead of just calling it inflation or the decrease in the purchasing value of the dollar which is what it really is which affects every commodity that we get 
uh, you know, bread, milk, clothes, gasoline, everything, uh, it, it seems to cost more year after year because the purchase, the value, the value of our dollar is decreasing. So you got to bring <clears throat> more dollars to the table to get the same loaf of bread that you got 20 years ago for next to nothing. And, uh, so, uh, so understanding what appreciation is all about is really important because, uh, it offers a, a big it, – it offers a, a, a huge financial benefit to investors that they can count on. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, and if you look at uh, – if you look at the long term uh, – and it's, it's different all over the country – Although I think the uh, I think the the increase in value of property values, which again just reflects the 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 uh, how <clears throat> how the value changes because of the decreasing value of the dollar, I think in major metropolitan cities all over the country it's probably it's it's probably similar, and uh, but uh, the advantage to a real estate investor is if you it, you buy property with leverage. Uh, you, <clears throat> for example, if you if you bought a five hundred thousand dollar property in today's market, you have to put twenty five percent down, and that's one hundred twenty five thousand. Well, if you're in an if you're in an area where the that price goes up about five percent a year, uh, what happens is <clears throat> you uh, that's going to be five percent of five hundred thousand is twenty five thousand dollars. Well, uh, divided by your $125,000 investment, that 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 gives you an additional 20% on your on your investment dollar. And uh, uh, if if in now Southern California traditionally has gone up about 7%. So at 7%, that's uh, 35,000 a year, and that's 28%. So so for the people that are listening that are good with math, and I haven't even added cash flow tax benefits or you know, loan payoff. Uh, if you put twenty percent, twenty eight percent into the uh, into the present value equation, and you and you and if you had that one hundred twenty five thousand, if you invest one hundred twenty five thousand for for ten years at twenty eight percent, at the end of the ten years, your one hundred twenty five thousand is going to be a huge chunk of money. And so people have to understand that because that's mm-hmm. part of the plan you put together is, is you want to plan for that. And, uh, and so we educate them on that. And then we, 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 and then, uh, just get, just understanding the marketplace, getting out, get in your car and go look around. And as you said earlier, you, 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 you bought property in other areas and that that can work out really good if, as long as you do your homework and you and you you see what what happens in those areas long term because uh th- that's really where it's at i'm <clears throat> the the town i'm from in minnesota uh when i when i got out of school and i started making money my mom and dad were divorced and and my dad he wanted to live back in Duluth, so I bought him a house back there for twenty-seven thousand. <clears throat> and I bought uh, I bought my I, my mom a house in El Segundo for uh, gosh, it was about I think it was a hundred thousand or a hundred and five. Uh, and twenty years later, when I sold my dad's house, I think I sold it for thirty-five thousand. And when I when when my my mom passed away and I sold that house, I think I got like five hundred thousand for it. It's just <laughs> it, it's just the difference in the because part of in the market the, the well it's the market because in so you can have you can you can uh, you can have the value of the dollar decrease so that the price of a product should go up uh, that amount, but in some areas you also have an increasing demand. And in other areas, you have a decreasing demand. All right. So right. it it can have a huge, and that's why it's important to to do your research to see to see uh, how that differs. And generally, generally speaking, the areas that have uh, because uh, you know p- 
people invest based on their overall return, the, the short term and the long term. And generally speaking, the areas that offer a higher current cash flow have have a lower growth rate over time versus the areas that have a lower cash flow starting but a higher growth rate where you, you where you can get you know that higher appreciation rate. You know, Southern California property is is very expensive and it doesn't offer uh, a, a huge cash on cash return to start because it has a very high <clears throat> it has a high appreciation rate and uh and rents do go up at a very fast pace and it doesn't start real good but it it uh it f- finishes i've got a i've got one building that it it, it <clears throat> i can think of this stat real quickly because i just i i just uh Rented this a unit in the building I have, and <clears throat> I just got. I bought this building 20 years ago, <clears throat> and the units were renting for 750 a month, and I just re-rented one of those units for for 25.95. That's pretty. <laughs> that's a pretty. That's a pretty hefty growth rate. Man. In the. In the <clears throat> so it's it's that's that's uh, important to to do the just. Just do the research so you understand the marketplace. Right, right. And then and then put a put a good plan together. What am I really trying to get out of buying real estate? What, how how is this going to help help me? Uh, how do I want it to help me? What do I want to get? What do I want to get? Uh, you know, it's back to that winning lottery ticket moment, and where you sit down, and you just figure out. And that's that's what. Uh, and I may be rambling a little, so reel me in if I am. But just that's. <laughs> That's really what people need. To, and the plan is really important. When I, in my new book, I have my first investment plan. And mm. when I came to work for Jack, Jack goes, Marty, you got to have a plan. I said, Jack, I don't have any money. I've got college debt. He mm-hmm. goes, that's all the more reason you need to plan because you got, you got to know where you're going. And it took me two years to put a plan together. Wow! But I, I still kept, and I put a copy in this new book that's coming out, because I don't, you know, if I hadn't done it, who knows where I'd be? Because I know a lot of people. Well, I just, you know, you come across so many in life that don't do that, and they, because nobody plans for the average person. Nobody plans for them. They go to work and they plan for their boss, but they never plan for themselves. The only group of people I know that that actually have a have someone watching out for their finances are professional athletes because they hire someone to do that. Right. <clears throat> and they, they make sure all that works. And, uh, and, but, but most people, but it's easy. You just say, it's not that hard to do. It really isn't. Right. Especially when you have, especially when you invest, I like real estate. I studied the stock market intently in college. And then of course, I offset that. I did. There was not much at, in college about real estate when I was there, but I had Bob's dad, and and uh, it's interesting because you know I knew we were going to talk today, and just a few days ago I got my Bloomberg Business magazine, mm-hmm. December fourth edition, and it was and there's a, a story called Look in Volume B for Buffett, why Berkshire Hathaway is still the in the encyclopedia business and the talk about everybody knows Warren Buffett <clears throat> and in the article it says, and it's hard to argue with Buffett's success, a hundred dollars invested in Berkshire when he took control in 1965 is worth more than 2 million today. That's, that's stag- That's staggering, right? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. But if you, if you stick it, if you stick it in the math formula, the current the discount rate calculator you can get it in the internet a uh, uh, hundred dollars invested for fifty two years that grew to two million the average annual return was twenty point nine eight percent wow if you if you buy a piece of real estate with twenty five percent down it goes up in value five percent a year you're making twenty percent you're doing mm-hmm. as good as Warren. Yeah. You're doing as good as, and with all the other things, you're doing even better than Warren. And the beauty of real, and the beauty of real estate, it never goes out of business, right? Right. right. People need a place right. to live. That's right. It's, yeah, and, and and but see, most people's worldview is, 
is that, well, real estate is risky and all that, and boy, the stock market, that's the way to go. Well, uh, <clears throat> I got an article out of the internet uh, uh, from the PRN Newswire uh, <clears throat> when, uh, when the S&P 500 turned 50. Uh, they they published a big story, and they said uh, they proudly announced that over the past 50 years, 86 of the original S&P 500 companies were still in business. Mm. And they they say that they're the that 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 they represent 75 percent of the the total U.S. market capitalization. Well, if you'd have started with them 57. 50 years ago, you had a 17% chance that you picked a stock in a in a in a company that was still in business today. Whereas, you could have virtually bought any piece of real estate, at least in Southern California and probably in most big cities in our country, and you you'd it'd be worth a fortune. Mm. So you had a 17% chance of making a lot of money or a 100% chance. Right. So that's why that's why I like real estate, that's <clears throat> and that's great. why it works so good. That's why it works so good. Leverage, leverage, and uh, and just uh, leveraging inflation to to grow your net worth. That's excellent. Um, well, well, Marty, what what's your your plans? What are you you know looking ahead here? Um, you know, you're 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 calling me right from your office right now, or um, right? Yeah. 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 Um, I, I locked mean, the front door so nobody could bother me. <laughs> <laughs> are are you? Uh, are, are, I mean, I don't even know if retirement would even be a term you would even use, you know, but, um, you know, I, I mean, are you going to continue, you know, doing this? Are you you going to back away? Are you changing anything or, or I mean, what, what what's ahead for you? Well, I, I'm lucky, you know, if you've got an engineering job, it's really hard to uh, to uh, semi retire. Uh, I'm lucky in that I've, I've, I've been retired kind of, it it depends on your definition retired, but I've, I've been able to come and go as I please for a long time because of my finances. And I, and I can add that a a great many of our clients, especially those that have been around a while have been in that position for a long time who came out of regular careers. And, and what happens is my wife and I, we, we travel a lot. We spend a lot of time with our kids and our grandkids. And when I'm not doing that, <clears throat> we do a lot of volunteer work. Uh, my wife's a retired nurse. She does a lot of volunteer work uh, for, for different organizations, especially uh, in the breast cancer field. Uh, we work the Avon Breast Cancer Walk every year. So last, so last year in Santa Barbara was our, my 10th year, her 12th, I think. And then wow. she, she does a lot. Of, she does a lot of work with 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 gals that are battling uh, cancer and and other things. And and so uh, when I'm not doing that, I'm I I go I still go to work because I still love I still love the business. I'm involved. We're ex, are, we're expanding again. The younger guys like my son Chris and and. Uh, and Anthony Walker has work. He he started as a client. And now he's he's running our biggest office and expanding for it. And so I help them with <clears throat> with marketing and training. And and I've got I I still work with clients, so especially a lot of long term clients. And <clears throat> I still uh, I, it's still fun for me, and uh, it it keeps me busy. And uh, and so. Uh, so <laughs> someone's that's knocking good. at my door, but I'm not going to answer. It. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I. So that's what I do. We spend a lot of again, like as funny as it sounds. Today at three, we pick our grand three granddaughters up at preschool, and we take them to gymnastics class. Then they spend the night with us, and we do some fun with them tomorrow. Uh, that's the kind nice. of way my weeks go. <clears throat> uh, so uh, wow, well, that's, and, that uh, sounds like the... traveling. We love we love traveling and. Yeah, I I think I sent you a picture of my wife and I on the beach in Hawaii. That's one of our favorite things to do. <laughs> yeah, that's great. You both look like uh, like kids out there, you know. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Photoshop, Photoshop, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're we're 
unfortunately, we're kind of have to wrap up at this point. Although I, I could okay. I could talk to you. I'll tell you, you know, I could talk to you for hours as uh, we've had some okay. of our other conversations yeah. here. But I, I, I will we'll do it again another day. I would love it. I would absolutely love it. And uh, okay. so we have a little thing we do at the end called wrap it up. And I ask you a series okay. of sort of quick questions, and then you okay. respond as. Um, as uh, quick as you can. Uh, and uh, I, just a uh, kind of a quick question here kind of came to mind because you know, one of the first things I asked is favorite real estate book. When you mentioned Jack's book, The Basic Real Estate Investment Guide, is that something yeah. that's still out there that people could get on Amazon or something? Or No, we, we give those away. So they, they uh, that's just a, that's a, uh, like I said, about 30 pages. We've got a basic real estate investment guide, a basic uh, real estate planning guide. And those are, Free for the asking. Uh, wow! Uh, so you can get them on our website. Uh, you can. I think you can even download them. I'm not really good at all that stuff, but yeah, oh, that. Cool. Uh, but you can get them there. <clears throat> well, good. Well, let me so, go, go ahead and get started on our wrap it up. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, here we go. Favorite real estate book, and I guess you can't count your own, unfortunately. No, no, and I. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure it's it's necessarily a real estate book, but my favorite book of all time is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Oh, yeah. Oh, for me. How, how about your favorite business book? Uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Kiyosaki. Mm. Most valuable website for success? Actually, it's uh, it, it, it's the, the, the website where you can analyze the future value of an investment based on the interest rate you think you can get. There's a million of them. There isn't any particular one, but th that's the one that you can plug in the amount of uh, <clears throat> amount of uh, money you have to work with, the kind of return you think you can get, and how long you, you, uh, you want to invest your money, and it'll tell you what it'll grow to. And that's that's the one that motivates people the most, I think. That'd be great. Maybe, uh, do, do you have a specific name for one to mention? Or uh, is that something you could send me later? I could I could post that on the show notes. Yeah, I can send you a link to one that works real good. I'll do that. Oh, that'd be great. Uh, can, that'd be great. I'll send you a link, yeah. Awesome. How about favorite app? Do you use any <laughs> apps on your phone? I don't. I don't use any apps at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's all right. That's I'm too right. much of an old dog. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's a, a lot of times uh, I get that response like, nah, I don't do apps. Uh, yeah, okay. How about favorite quote? Uh, favorite quote is, a rich man is one who knows when he has enough. I like that one. I actually wrote that down when you first mentioned that in the interview. That's excellent. Yeah. Um, and then the final one here. Okay, this is our kind of cataclysmic uh, question here. And that is, if you, if there was something that happened that you lost absolutely everything, I mean, maybe, you know, you, you just, uh, there's no money in the bank, all your properties, everything's gone. All you have are, is $1,000 in cash. What would you do with that thousand dollars to try to reestablish your real estate investing business? Well, if I if I could qualify for a loan, I would go out and uh, I would I would buy a uh, I would buy the biggest property I could buy FHA and live in it. And if you could, a, a, a lot of lenders will set a three and a half percent down. They'll let you get in for a half percent down, so you could buy. You could probably buy something for close to two hundred thousand. I'd get started again that way. Wow! High leverage. Get started. Great. Because because the higher the leverage is, the more money you make on the money that you have. So uh, so that's what I do. Well, good. Well, that was uh, uh, that was great. I appreciate that. Um, I, I know there's people that are listening too that that probably want to find out more about uh, Buckingham and and some of the things you guys do there. May want to even come over and and uh, you know meet people over there. Uh, how can people reach you? How can people reach um, you know your company? Well, uh, we have a company website that goes that that tells a lot about Buckingham, buckinghaminvestments.com. Uh, my, if they wanted to send me an email, my email address is gr and the number eight and the word profit, P-R-O-F-I-T at AOL.com. All right. That's great. That's great. Well, um, 
Marty, I already warned you about this last part of the uh, how we close out our show here. And this is uh, our closing howl. So each of our guests <laughs> has to give us their best, <laughs> their best old hound dog howl, okay, to close us out. I, I hope you've been practicing okay. now. <laughs> okay. All right. Are so, you ready? Uh, yeah, I am ready. Yes. Oh! <laughs> All right. Now they're going to knock down your door, the people out the side. Gonna, yeah. Yeah. Something's, something's wrong with Marty. We got to get in there. <laughs> That's something. That sounds like that sounds like my old basset hound Fred. That's the way he'd howl when he when he wanted to come in. <laughs> I love it. Well, I cannot thank you enough, Marty, for coming on the show. Uh, okay, you know, I it was been, fun talking to you. Yeah, same here. And uh, love your books. And uh, hopefully, we'll get uh, maybe when the other one's about ready to come out or something. Maybe we could uh, have you on again, and uh, you could talk sure. a little. That'd be any 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 time. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Uh, well, same here. Same here. Well, I also want to thank all our old dog listeners out there, too, for joining us. I know there's a lot of other things you could be doing right now, but the fact that you've taken the time to join us means a lot. And we just greatly appreciate it. So please note, old dog listeners, everything presented here today, including the links, and there were a lot of uh, different things that we could have links to, um, can be accessed in our detailed show notes on the Old Dogs website at olddogsreinetwork.com forward slash blog. And look for the episode with uh, Martin Stone. Well, that's it for today. Remember, cash flow is king and real estate investing the means. Until next time, keep moving forward and may God bless. Thank you very much for visiting the Old Dogs REI Network. We would greatly appreciate if you would stop by iTunes and let us know what you think of the show. We would love if you could subscribe to the podcast, give us a five-star rating, and write a review. The more ratings and reviews we receive, the more visible the podcast will be to others. Thank you.